911 emergency this time. You're at Yale Green School? Yes. Shots were fired by room 42 on campus. Do you know where the person with the gun is? No. Who's the victim? Is there a victim? I'm on the phone with dispatch. Hi there, this is Nicholas Casimir, and I'm here with Marta Cunningham, the director of Valentine Road. For those who don't know, um, this case of Larry King, a young 15-year-old boy who was shot by a classmate. Do you remember when you first heard about the shooting? I actually heard about the shooting in September of 2008, and this occurred in February of 2008. It was something that I felt was so horrifying on so many levels, and the fact that at the time Larry was being perceived as gay and Brandon was allegedly a white supremacist. There were so many issues that I felt that the media wasn't really looking at. I felt that a doc was in order and started filming. The catalyst for the shooting was Larry, this young 15-year-old boy who was expressing his sexuality. It was actually more gender expression mm -hmm. yeah. and gender identity um, that I, I think was the confusing aspect to the children and to the administration. He wanted to be called Letitia. He preferred Monday, feminine Letitia accessories. And, uh, and so it and looked like he was exploring his gender expression. Just to go back a little bit, Larry gave a Valentine's Day card to a fellow classmate. Well, he just said, actually. Um, he oh. didn't give uh, anything, okay. but he did say that um, he wanted Brandon to be his Valentine. And this had a cataclysmic effect on Brandon, correct? It, from what it sounds like, what the kids have said is that um, he looked embarrassed. Mm -hmm. um, but in the court, it sounded like uh, really it was the next day he said something like, hi, that set Brandon off. So do you think so, if Larry King was a girl who had approached a boy, to be his valentine. These are the questions I ask my audience. But I do feel that if we change gender around, if we change orientation, sexual orientation, are we gonna come up with the same answers? We need an ambulance. The ambulance is on the way. They should be there staging any time now, okay? Everyone was screaming, like the kids that I've seen it. Like the blood and everything, I guess. You interview a lot of the key players of this trial and also this case, but one of the voices that we don't hear from is Brandon, the, the young man who committed this crime, who is incarcerated. Um, did you not have access to him? At first, we didn't have access to him, and uh, what I did is I made a conscious decision to stop pursuing access. I felt that since Larry's voice was not going to be in the film, that Brandon should not be either because of the vicious nature of the crime. This is not a crime that the juvenile system is capable of handling. What can we learn from this awful incident? Well, I think the prosecutor, Mae Fox, says it best at the end of my film, which is why we put it in. And she says, unless we become more forgiving and more accepting, this is gonna keep happening. Well, thank you so much for talking to us. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Great film, great thank film. You.